to Q the View. My name is Jack. Today I'm again at a very interesting place. Am I at, am I at a museum? A gallery? An art studio? All of the above? No matter what, I'm here with the genius behind the beauty. I'm joined here with Seth B. Menken. Seth, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, beautiful art here. Um, viewers, make sure to look at this art behind us as we talk, and let's begin. Seth, as I usually like to start off my interviews, they know who I am. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, I just told you my name. I'm Seth B. Macon, and uh, I'm an artist, and I make paintings for a living. Uh, and I've been doing it uh, since professionally since 1997. So whatever the math is on that, that's how long I've been keeping the lights on, mm -hmm. making and selling paintings. And uh, but as you look around, and I'll show you some other stuff later, we've done some other products uh, using the art as intellectual property. So you think of prints. And then we've extend, extended from there, so we've now got scarves and pocket squares, and we've sort of entered the world of interior design and fashion in that way, wall coverings, stuff like that. Very cool, expanding all over the art world. Seth, when did you know you were an artiste? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I don't remember the exact year, but I want to say somewhere around three three years old or so, I was, uh, I had this habit of going, to, I'd go out to restaurants with my parents and everybody would be talking and I would instantly flip over the placemat and just get to work. And then from there, it was just everything and anything. So, and unfortunately for my parents, that included furniture and upholstery and anything I could get my hands on. Uh, I would do sort of my form of graffiti which is now kept mainly to the canvas. But uh, so I'd say maybe three or four years old, pretty early. Seth, would you call your beautiful passion a business or a hobby? Or maybe a little mix of both? Early on, I, I used to, to do that. I used to go out on a mission to sort of see what's out there whether it's uh, the Isabella Stewart Gardner or maybe just another artist studio. And uh, so I have lots and lots of sketchbooks that have lots of these cool little doodles in them. And I still look back on them to this day like notes in my own personal art history. And so it used to be, what would happen is I would go through and refer to these things to come up with like, okay, what do I want to do now? And then sort of bring them out from the book onto the main stage and sort of see them through, almost like an architect does with blueprints. Um, but now it's just more like what comes out of my head and, and out of me. Seth, as you know, art is much harder than it looks. Does art, and when you're making a painting, does it come easy to you? Uh, you know what, it depends on the piece mm -hmm. and it depends on the project. So there are certain projects that I'll take on because I know that the end result is going to be worth all the work. I would say that the maps, things like that that are very elaborate and require tremendous accuracy, like recording what you see, that's hard, that's probably the closest thing I do to something that feels like real work, hard work. Uh, and then it runs the gamut all the way to some of these big colorful pieces that are really mostly just fun, where I'm just literally throwing paint and it kind of feels a little bit like gardening or landscaping where you're kind of just taking care of these things and watching them grow and you just kind of stay out of the way and nurture them and then you just kind of have an intuition to know when they're done. Seth, can we go take a look at some of your pieces? Absolutely. Seth, do you have a favorite piece that you've made? Uh, you know what, I actually do have a few. Um, these are all such different personalities, but some of them um, some of them 
sort of, I guess, more special to me than others, even though it feels terrible to say that because mm -hmm. it, it does feel like you're talking about your kids. But this is pretty damn cool here. Yeah. This is substrata. And so of all the abstracts that are here, uh, this one is particularly great in my opinion. Um, and it's just one of these pieces that does a little bit of everything. So it's very dramatic. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, there's something very soothing about it. So it kind of walks the line and does a, a little bit of everything, gives you all the feels, so to speak. Seth, you talked about before how tedious maps are. And you yourself make maps. If we go over here to this map, which looks like New York City, how long do you think this map took you to make? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, another really good question. So, um, uh, for the first 20 some odd years that uh, I've been making art for a living, I'd never really been able to do any, like half of my business comes from commissions. And one of the top three questions people ask when they commission a work is how long is it gonna take? Because why? Because you're giving me a deposit and then you're waiting. You wanna know when it's gonna be ready. You get excited and the longer I have to wait, the crazier you get. These things take the time that they take, which is not enough of an answer if, if you're gonna pay good money for it. So 2016, I set out and did these three really big maps. They were even bigger than these. They were six by six and I made a journal Every time I would punch in, I'd say, okay, I'm working now. If I broke for lunch or anything, I would clock out of the journal so that I could actually add up the hours and know the exact amount of hours. And uh, so with this piece, I could tell you that it was 303 working hours. And Seth, my biggest burning question right now is the street names. How did you get each street name just like perfect, did you look at a map? Was it online? Yeah, so uh, that's the whole reason why I was talking about doing these uh, feels can be very tedious because maps are a portrait of sorts. They're also navigational tools. And so accuracy is critical. And then once you get sort of past that point where like a portrait, it's very recognizable. That's part of what makes these image is great, you have a point of nostalgia, you can travel around to places you used to live or work. Uh, but to get to your question in terms of all the accuracy of all the city streets, I choose a map that I really like as a subject for a painting. And there are always maps of a certain vintage because I think it's more interesting to work from something that represents what's changed, what was there, what's no longer there, what's replaced it. Mm -hmm. um, but I always have other maps around for that exact reason, so that I know where all the information is and, and I don't make any mistakes. Seth, you have so many themes in all your paintings. I mean, example behind us. How do you get these themes? And can you give the viewers a little sneak peek of what's next? Yeah, so uh, the way that the all these different uh, series come about is that they're all connected and they're all related. Each past piece informs and inspires the next. And so this abstract series started maybe 2018, 2019, and it's still ongoing. Obviously, I'm working on one right now. But what usually ends up happening is I will work an idea for years mm -hmm. and so uh, something in a previous series will come to me and that little idea will sort of spark something completely new and completely different that doesn't that seems completely unrelated but so in the back of my mind over the years and years that i've been doing these paintings i always thought to myself there's this zoom in zoom out element where if I just zoomed in, maybe I could do a painting that's just scales. Mm. And so that actually sparked the shape series where I... 
Seth, if you could paint anyone, dead or alive, who would you paint and why? Yeah. Um, well, you know what? That's a really good question, and I'm going to be honest with you. It's a little bit heavy, but you're asking, and so I'm going to tell you, my dad's not with us anymore, mm -hmm. and I love him, and I miss him a lot. So I think when I get up the, the courage to go there, I think that would be a really a good experience, mm -hmm. kind of revisit them in that way. I don't do a lot of portraits, and I haven't done one in quite some time. And the last one I did, I'm pretty sure was a dog. I don't think it was a person. Um, but, so I'd have to say my dear old dad. Yeah. Very nice, very beautiful. Yeah. Seth, street signs. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. You got stop, mm -hmm. crosswalks, one way, I mean, etc. I'm sure you know street signs. Would you call street signs art? You know what? A thousand percent. That's another great question. I think you have to. I think anytime you involve elements of design, mm -hmm. colors, graphics, things of that nature, um it's a different part of the brain but it's a hundred percent art for sure seth our final fun question art supplies mm -hmm. paint brushes paint mm -hmm. canvases easels yeah if you could be any art supply mm -hmm. which one would you be yeah uh it's funny, I wasn't thinking that you were going there. I'm just like, yeah, man, it is really expensive. You're right. Uh, well, I guess I would be the paint. I mean, they're, they're the th that's the Versatile. thing, right? That's the star of the show, right? <laughs> yeah. Seth, thank you so much for being on Cue the View. Really appreciate it. Today, our microphone is Seth's very loved paintbrush from the 90s, you said. Yeah. Um, but... It's formed its own characteristics and it's beautiful the way it is. Seth, thank you again so much for being on Key the View. My name is Jack. Today, again, joined here with Seth B. Minkin. Seth Minkin. We're out. <laughs>